I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on this pair of uh, Louboutin men's shoes. And Louboutins are not very common, so it's kind of a definitely one of those video worthy pairs to work on. So what we're going to be doing today is of course putting on the Caselli mirror gloss finished red bottoms on there. Just as a half sole like that as a protective sole right there. I'm going to put it on and then afterward, well during that process I'll actually be reattaching one of the little spikes that fell off here. So that's definitely one of those things and then of course the other thing we're going to brush clean them do like a regular dry clean on it basically not a full in-depth clean just because there's no visible staining of any kind but all right it probably should reinforce a couple of these other spikes around here because that looks like where we lost one of them so I'll be sure to check on that all right but at this point I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tape and start taping everything off all around at least uh, this front area because during that process it's gonna help protect the upper quite a bit with the sanding and trimming I mean we we're very cautious about what we do anyways but it's a good thing to have as a reinforcement to, to have a layer of protection especially with these spikes sticking out they could easily accidentally get hit by one of the machines and we don't want anything like that to happen that's for sure otherwise process takes longer we got to contact Louis Vuitton and say hey we need a couple of more of these spikes we're missing such and such amounts so it takes a while and usually they don't like sending out extra parts they just want to send out the exact amount that you need so all right but we'll go ahead and get started on the taping i won't waste your time on all that um just because it's very time consuming but once i got it taped up i'll meet you back over here in a few then all right so i've got everything taped off now at this point and uh i also used some tape right there to mark where we're going to be cutting into every into the sole itself i made sure to stay above the logo so the logo of the little baton here is underneath the tape right now to make sure to keep it all protected and still visible and everything we don't want to overlap that logo at all otherwise kind of looks bad in other words but um, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and grab our blade like that there and start skiving away here now I could technically sand it out it is quicker but the problem is that it doesn't end up being perfectly grooved for us to be able to have this sole sitting in here flush so I have to make sure that I cut it out to make it nice and flush otherwise uh, you know just looks a little sloppy that way now it is still a bit of a challenge because these have been worn as you can tell so there may be some small nicks still somewhat visible underneath where the tape is i'll try to touch it up of course with some color afterwards but we gotta work on the sole but at this point i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting into it now sorry it's not exactly all that visible right on camera there but yeah sorry about the interruption had a phone call coming through but at this point we'll just cut in now uh, let's see now the tape does have a great um great number of reasons of why we end up using it because one of course it protects the upper from the machines while we're working on it and two also for indication on everything like we have the indication right now now and it's not just to protect it from the machinery while we're sanding and grinding everything away it is also um to help when we start doing the edging on these because it is a black edge here and this is a suede upper on these so we got to make sure that that suede upper is protected during the re-edging process otherwise it just turns out really bad you don't want to get any edgy ink on suede ever it, it's uh, it's gonna make it look smooth in those spots and just ruin it basically I mean the shoes won't be ruined where they won't be wearable, but it's going to be noticeable from, well, from a, up close, in other words. From a distance, it won't be too noticeable, though. Okay. Now it 
coming at an angle now i did forget to mention now when we cut this section out we just cut out a small portion about that wide right there and then the rest of this does get sanded out it makes it a quicker and easier process and a little bit more even it's it's hard to do a large surface area of cutting it out it's not quite as even unfortunately in some areas sometimes but when we're doing this back area here we can get better control with the blade and then afterwards everything else gets evened out properly piece there get that out of here and toss it now it's a matter of evening everything out and fixing it up shaving off what we need to I'm very very particular about that I could sit here for a good while just going through every tiny little spot and trying to make sure it's all fixed up but You can only get it so perfect, you know, sometimes. But most of the time it tends to work out pretty all right. This is actually one of the more most gut-wrenching parts basically for a lot of cobblers a lot of cobblers don't do it this way there's just a small handful that actually do it with a blade like this um, just because again this is a very sharp blade that's on here it's on those razor blades like that there and uh, so if it slips you can do some serious damage to that upper if you're not careful so you either have to have a very steady hand, well actually, well, there's a few cobblers out there that don't exactly have very steady hands, I would say, but they have enough confidence and everything to counter that and they do really good work on it actually. They could get it better than some people with steady hands too, which is pretty cool. You know who you are, Steve. It's another shoe shine guy in our, or shoe shine shoe repair guy in our industry does really good work too i've talked to him a few times online but he's in another state from us so one of these days i'll be meeting all these cobblers that i've been talking to back and forth and hopefully see them at an event for cobblers that they have going on with competitions and everything. I'm hoping to enter the next one. I'm not expecting necessarily to win. I mean, that would be awesome. But I want to get a feel for it. I want to see what, what kind of things they rate us on because competition repairs are very different, I guess you can say. I mean, you know, say for example this pair it may look perfect and everything there's like no problems you pick it up it fits perfect nothing nothing's changed all it is is just that rubber protective soap but when it comes down to the competition they they nitpick every little small detail about it not necessarily you know how well it holds up or the durability or how well it's put together but it's the small fine details i mean they judge very accordingly on a lot of things and I really want to get a feel for how intense their judging is because I haven't entered one of those competitions yet but it'd be really cool to check out and even if I place that'd be really an awesome thing all right there we go so that's about as far as we really need to cut it out there which actually before I do go any further I should double check to make sure 
everything lines up well. Okay. Beautiful. Just about. All right. Actually, nope, works good. All right, cool. Got that all taken care of. So now I just gotta do the other one the same way. And then I'll go ahead and sand everything out. I won't bore you with that part of everything and uh, glue it all up. I'll let you see what it looks like after it's all sanded and everything. And we'll go from there. So I'll see you back here in just a little while then. All right, so we've got everything all sanded out now. So at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and glue it. And I just wanted to give a note to any cobblers that may be watching also. These uh, mirror Caselli soles are pre-treated so we don't have to ever sand them out maybe anyone else that's watching that's not a cobbler maybe an interesting fun fact most protective soles we end up having to sand out to rough it up so that we can adhere the soles a little bit better but a lot of these red ones are actually pre-treated nowadays so sanding is not a good thing but we always have to make sure we sand out this area here because if we still leave the red behind i've had requests like that before just to glue the red over top it will peel up immediately. The very first day that you wear them, you're going to start having the sole peel up because this is too smooth of a surface area. Plus, we also have to, you know, remove a small amount anyways, otherwise it's going to kind of stick up a little bit too high. These are about a millimeter and a half thick, roughly. So, you know, it's not much, but it's still going to stick up quite a bit if we don't, if we don't accommodate that difference in thickness, basically. Otherwise, may feel a little wonky for some people. I, I do have some people that can feel one millimeter difference on their shoes. So if something changes or is adjusted, they will feel it. And we don't want that. So, and the other thing is also you'll end up wearing out your heels a lot quicker. Now these heels, of course, you can see they've got some, some wear on them and everything. So we're gonna be taking care of those. We're not replacing the heels today on these but uh, I'll touch them up anyways with a little bit of uh, Andalus walk on red bring back some of that red coloring there all right so at this point I'm just gonna do everything that I need to and then when it's time to stick the soles on I'll see you back here in just a little while I do have to allow some time for everything to cure add more layers of glue things like that so once it's time to stick them then I'll meet you back over here so we'll see you back here in just a little while then all right so we're back here again i just pulled the sole out of the oven right now so we're gonna go ahead and start lining everything up okay there we go a little warm we do have to warm it up a little bit makes it a little easier and more malleable Take the other side of my hammer and just make sure I press down right here nicely. Now I'm not going to be putting these on our press. We do have a press that presses things down and usually we don't do with Louboutins or you know other shoes that have a sole that's a little bit on the thinner side and glued especially. Some shoes we get in that are stitched. Now those we'll definitely put on the press but anything that's just glued on we don't want to put on the press because the pressure can get up to 800 pounds. Now of course we could regulate that but we still want to make sure that we're you know being a little more careful about it and not accidentally having the uh, bonding of these of the original leather sole start coming undone slightly because of that when we have a stitched sole it, it's not going to come apart i mean this the stitching holds it all in place nicely so we don't necessarily need to do that but at this point we do have of course some axis left over and i did, should probably also go through and double check make sure everything's all sticking nicely all right that's good but now i'm going to use my hook blade like that there and just cut off some of this access a little bit. 
It's a little bit harder with this Caselli sole because it likes to stretch more than anything. Some of the other soles, they have a different uh, mixture in it, so it doesn't quite stretch. And so we have to be a little more careful when we're cutting this sole, just so we don't accidentally pull up one of the edges on it or anything like that. And I can only cut off so much, basically. And then the rest, we're gonna end up going to our trimmer and trimming it up. Now, before actually trimming it, of course, I gotta allow this to cure. And the adhesives that we use, it recommends curing time about 30 minutes to an hour. But with the Louboutins, again, because we're not applying so much pressure and everything, um, I, I like to allow these to cure overnight. So basically at this point, we're done for today on them. And then we're gonna come back in tomorrow and then start uh, trimming everything out and then continuing the whole process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one now and just uh, leave these to uh, cure in our curing section. And then we'll see you back here tomorrow when it's time to trim it out. For you guys, it'll probably be just a few seconds basically. So we'll see you later then. All right, so we're back here again. I've allowed these to cure overnight nicely so they're on there pretty good now so it won't be coming off now at this point we're gonna go ahead and start trimming everything off even though i cut off a lot of the access stuff to make sure it's trimmed so that it's perfectly flushed we're over at one of our finishing machines here which has a trimmer on here that basically are blades that spin really fast so it's going to cut away at the material and then afterwards we're going to move up here to what's called our numb keg pad and it'll kind of give us our finish uh, touch up basically and it helps us bevel that sole inward just a little bit so that it doesn't catch any corners and potentially peel up. But let's go ahead and get started then. Alright, so we got it all sanded out and trimmed. Uh, there is al also a little lip here I forgot to mention on this, so it's not a straight cut. It actually goes down and then sticks out a little bit. Just kind of a little lip there that I want to make sure that stays the way it was originally. There were a few spots that were already kind of worn out on that lip. Unfortunately, that's not preventable in any kind of way. And I don't want to make it just a straight cut. You might be able to see it back here here just a little bit there and on the front of the sole here it, it's definitely a larger lip there so we've got to make sure that it's uh, it's still there but we've got everything sanded out it's nicely beveled slightly so that uh, the sole stays on there for a longer period of time and it doesn't end up uh, sticking out like a sore thumb as well but at this point now I've just got to start well I got to blow all the dust off and everything put the edge dressing on and while the edge dressing is kind of uh, curing and everything I will uh, work on that spike actually now I still have to hold off on that spike I forgot I still got to wax the edges too and I want to leave the tape on but to fix the spike I have to take that tape off so I'll do the edging on there I won't bother you too much with that but um, once I've got the edging taken care of, I'll meet you back over here and you'll see what it looks like at that point. So we'll see you in a few of them. All right, so we've got the edge dressing all taken care of now on there. So from the side, it definitely looks a bit nicer and all black like that. But I didn't clean them off yet, uh, just, uh, just because I wanted to make sure to show you guys why we do the tape. You can see right there, there's a little bit there because I do have to touch up uh, the sides a little bit with some uh, spray dye basically it's a spray on version that helps helps make it a little bit shinier at least with these i mean we do put a wax coat but when we do just a little bit more spray dye it gives it that nice final touch but that's one of the reasons why we have that tape there also and the other one is you can see it here at the bottom i don't want to clean this off beforehand you can see some of it kind of spread all over there but the bottom, luckily, this can be cleaned off. Now, different soles, like the Vibram or GTO that we have, they are treaded. So we have to be actually a lot more cautious with it. And so we can't just, uh, you know, spray it like that. 
but I wanted to show you that this kind of stuff happens a lot and we do have to always make sure it's cleaned off. Now I've noticed that there are some shops, at least, at least some shops that I've worked for in the past that actually kind of ignore this just a little bit. They don't, uh, they don't go into the cleaning side of things, so it's kind of a shame, but even though this bottom's gonna get worn, it's gonna get dirty and everything, these shoes still have to be presentable going out that door. Gotta make sure it's beautiful looking. Nice. There we go. All right, and then I'll take my more of my crepe barco. There we go. I've got some of this plantation crepe. At this point, I'm gonna make sure any glue that may be back here is cleaned off. Actually, I could take the tape off at least the back area here. Still want to leave it around the edges just in case if there's any kind of touch-ups I want to make still. But this back area here, we're basically done with it. I gotta go through and just clean off some of the glue that may be there. There's always gonna be a small hairline gap that may occur, especially on a worn pair. On a brand new pair, that's much smooth smaller chance, sorry, I can't talk right now, that that may happen, so it's a lot easier when they're new, a lot less problems, but when they're worn like these ones were, there's there's some limitations there and everything, so we'll move on to this one here, and I could take off the tape basically even before cleaning off the bottom at least on here because we're not using a very strong solution and I'm only going through the rubber section anyways. Got that taken care of. Looking pretty good. All right, now we'll go ahead and move on to our Angelus Walk on Red. Probably show that to you right there. Ours is, of course, kind of worn out because we use it a lot, but it's a specially formulated paint, basically, that's designed to go on the bottom of Louis Vuittons. Uh, it's durable and uh, will help restore the color quite a bit. We like to use it to touch up any spots as well. Uh, like on these ones, like I said, I'm gonna be touching up the heel a little bit on these as well. I'm gonna go through this area here just as a precaution if there's any gaps, which there are minor ones anyways, but it helps touch up the coloring on it. Now we can go through the heel here a little bit. And it's not going to do too much, especially with just one coat. And I talked to a gentleman, this wasn't a major concern about the heel, but eh, why not? We'll just touch it up at least slightly in the parts that are worn off. I mean, there's a lot of little rocks and stuff still in there, and if I try to pull the rocks out right now, I'm actually going to accidentally do some damage to it, and it's just unavoidable at this point. I mean, we'd have to replace the heel if you're really trying to get that red back on there without showing any kind of divots or anything like that. But... It's nice to do a little extra sometimes. Now, 
if we were if you're someone who's just wanting the bottom repainted and you're not wanting to um, to get the rubber protective sole on or sole guard we could always repaint it using this stuff the way we do it actually it, it does cost a little bit more than the protective soles because the process takes a lot more we tape off the shoe a lot more and we airbrush it so that it goes on a lot more smoothly so it's it's definitely definitely take sorry about that my battery had died just then but anyways I did buff up that bottom a little bit and added just a little more wax on that heel base around there just a little bit more not too much around that so got that all taken care of now and still of course it does have those divots and everything in there and dark spots and everything from just dirt and grime but I'd rather much not sand this out or anything like that because then it won't be leveled with that rubber section of the heel so I'm just gonna put some of that uh, finish on there and that's that's that I mean I did mention to this gentleman if he's wanting you know the heel redone completely we'll have to kind of shave it down some anyways or replaced whichever option but he still has so much wear left in these and he said it's perfectly fine but just as an extra I thought I'd touch it up for him at least but anyways at this point now I can start taking off the tape and re revealing everything have to be a little bit more careful with suede just because this tape likes to rip I mean, it is more of like a masking tape anyway, so get these little chunks of tape that ripped it. It's a little bit more of a pain to kind of peel it all off afterwards. Okay. I would definitely prefer to do this as a precaution. I mean, if you have a pair of Louboutins or another type of high-end shoe that's basically um, like a special edition or it's a model that was discontinued you know if, if the shoe gets damaged we would definitely take full responsibility for it um, as well as other cobbler shops they should take full responsibility for it if they damage the shoe but you know if it's if it's a model that's discontinued or a special edition it's irreplaceable so Putting that tape on definitely will save them quite a bit. It's, it's extra time for us, yes, but we'd rather take that as a precaution. And, um, you know, you won't have to deal with the hassle of us, you know, trying to figure out what the cost of the shoes were and everything and such and such or having to replace them if they're replaceable. And it's just too much hassle. So it's, it's always better to go that safer route there. But it gives you a clear idea of what it all looks like. Now again, I mean, they, these were worn before, so there were some divots, I think on this other one, there was a bit of a divot somewhere here. Yeah, just just a little, a little bit right there. Kind of hard to see, but we tried making sure that we covered up as much as we could without actually covering the logo. And just because you don't want to cover the logo on these, it'd be a shame. So, And it's a good thing these Casellis fit these shoes. Unfortunately, at the moment, um, all of our suppliers carry only one size of them. We are trying to hunt down some larger sizes as well for you know, a much larger shoe. I mean, these are 45, so it's a pretty decent size already. But if we get one then that's even bigger, like a 47, I don't think this Caselli will fit very well. So... But again, men's uh, men's Louboutins are a little, a little less common than the women's that we see. Anyways, we do see a bit more of the men's Louboutins that are more of like the tennis shoe models or anything like that. But more of the dress style with the leather sole, not as often. Definitely, um, it's it's just probably one men's shoe. We see probably ten women's Louboutins, so definitely more of them come up here and grab the little baggie where I had this spike. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna attach this spike here. Now these are plastic so luckily press fitting them in a little bit of adhesive 
just a tiny, tiny dab. If this one works. Now, if this spike was completely shattered or damaged badly to the point where it's you know, not usable anymore, then we would actually it would take much longer because we'd have to contact Louis Vuitton, send them pictures and everything, um, and order the part in, which we can get parts in for certain shoes from Louis Vuitton as well. Um, but it definitely does take longer to do so. Those sit and cure for just a minute and I'll be right back then all right so I had a cure just for just for a minute at this point I'm gonna reinforce it some because the adhesive that I just put in there it was to fill in that small hole and let that cure now I'm gonna take a safety pin so I can carefully get in here this is why I have scraps of leather laying around I've got safety pins all over because sometimes we gotta do something just like this here okay, so I've got that all taken care of now I'm gonna blow them off real quick with some compressed air to get any extra dust off all right got our brush here Dang it. stuff always comes off the towels onto this okay i've got our nylon brush here this is also from angelus it's a softer brush it comes in some of the kits that they have we stock they have the easy cleaner kit and then um, foam kit actually the foam kit our local supplier at least doesn't have it anymore but these are really nice soft bristle brushes here um, they're not quite as tough as this one right here this is a stiffer bristle brush which works great for more in-depth cleaning, but just for, to go over um, with the dry clean, I do definitely like these quite a bit. But we're just gonna go back and forth right here, and then side to side, because we're trying to get in between all those spikes there. And if you have suede Louboutins, if you get any suede ones, this should be one of your priority number ones to get is a nylon brush because a nylon brush you're going to be able to at least do some of your light dry cleaning like that there you know when you get home at the end of the day or something you, know, you just take your little batons off your foot after a night out or whatever it was you were doing and just go over like this really quickly and it'll get a lot of the dirt and grime off during that process you'll be able to notice if there's anything wrong with your shoe as well. Say you, you pick up your shoe and you flip it over and you notice that your heels are worn out or your sole is starting to get very thin. Um, it, it, that little extra 30 second to 60 second step to keeping your Louboutins longer, even if you have the money to just toss them and buy a new pair, you know, if you have a, one of those models that's discontinued and it's just or a one of a kind basically that you had customized possibly even too. This basic maintenance can really, really help improve the longevity of your shoes. Um, you'll get all the dust and dirt off that takes down a lot of um, on having to clean them more frequently, like bringing them to us to do a full suede treatment and cleaning. And as well as um, it'll kind of help you give that opportunity to check through your shoe to see how the soles are doing, the heels are doing. During that time as well, you can take a look and see if that insole is coming up or unglued anywhere as well. Um, just that one step of maintenance with just a suede brush can really basically save your favorite pair of shoes and extend the life expectancy of them just because you took 30 seconds to 60 seconds after wearing them all day or for an evening and um, you know brush them off and be able to examine them so I highly recommend 
this should be first on your list if you're getting suede shoes. Um, now the second thing for men's at least, now ladies they're a little bit harder um, to do just because they don't make so many of them, but uh, shoe trees, this is actually a boot tree that I have but it was nearby so I grabbed it. Uh, cedar shoe trees, this gentleman did have some in here that we took out and set them up on, on a shelf next to the rest of his order. and. Um, Having these for any of your flat Louboutins or your men's Louboutins will definitely help significantly because the cedar will help wick away the moisture after your foot's been perspiring and it'll kind of help refresh it because it still has that cedary smell to it as well. Um, the other thing is also it will help keep the shape because after a while you'll start to get a crease right here where your toe bends. Um, maybe the leather is very soft and it will try to collapse. That cedar shoe tree will help keep that shape. Now again, for the high heel versions where you know they're platformed or just a really high heel, finding cedar shoe trees is a lot more challenging. But anyways, those shoes are usually more open anyway, so you get a good amount of ventilation going in through there and they don't collapse as easily because they use much harder materials on building up that upper as well. Um, at least, uh, you know, the all the counters and everything, they're a little bit tougher. Where the flats, they tend to use a little bit softer grades of materials so eventually they'll start to either show creasing more or just start to want to collapse after a little while and especially if you have patent leather those will show creasing like crazy the cedar shoe trees will help at least not prevent it of course you're not going to be able to prevent it a hundred percent but it'll at least you know extend the life expectancy where those creases will uh, will take much longer to appear and even when they appear it's a much smaller amount than if you had no shoe trees in them. So please highly advise suede shoes if you have them, nylon brush number one thing always. Um, next step of course is your cedar shoe trees and third one is waterproof them. Always waterproof them which reminds me I'm gonna have to waterproof these also after I'm done here with all this. Uh, I didn't tell the gentleman I was going to, but it uh, be a good idea to always do that. Waterproofing is very important as well. Always, always waterproof your suede. It'll help prevent staining um, as well as, you know, help the water beat up on when you're walking through maybe a, a rainy day or a puddle and didn't have a spare pair of shoes to switch out to. It'll at least help extend that life expectancy that way too. And then, you know, those are the three major steps with suede. Suede is very, uh, very durable material. The only thing is, again, of course, it likes to absorb everything. So suede brush for your basic after every time you wear them type of thing. Uh, cedar shoe trees to make sure to keep them refreshed and shape, shaped properly as well. And number three would be waterproofing. But waterproofing is probably... Oh, okay, we'll say number one is waterproofing, actually. Waterproofing is most important, brand new out of the box, then suede brush, then shoe trees. Sorry, I should have put them in. But anyways, um, if you're also wanting us to work on any of your Louboutins or any of your other shoes or leather goods, we do handbags, belts as well. We do some jacket work too, a lot of zipper repairs too. And Louboutins, we've been definitely seeing a spike in the industry and here in Colorado, at least there are more and more people, it seems like, that love the Louboutins. So we've been seeing a lot more of them. And if you're wanting us to work on them, you're more than welcome to bring them in if you're local. If you're not local, go to our website, cobblersplus.com, and under the ship and order tab, you can follow the instructions there and always mail them in to us. After receiving them through the mail at our shop, We'll give you a call within a day or two, talk over any repair options that you're wanting to do, give you any kind of recommendations, you know, authenticate if they're real or fake. If you want to have that authenticated as well, you could always add that into the notes or let us know when we're talking to you on the phone. Once we've talked that all over, we'll start the repair process, get it scheduled out, and once they're all finished up, we'll ship them back over to you and uh, let you continue enjoying your shoes to the full extent with, um, in like this case, a bit of an upgrade as well. So, all right, thank you for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. I'm hoping to release more and more videos about this, maybe some about uh, recommendations on how to care and maintain more on your Louboutins. Um, more details about possibly identifying authenticity as well so if you have been enjoying this don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon and you know just share our page as well if you like to all right well we'll just see you next time then